Hi everybody, I'm Mrs. Turney. I am a teacher at Delaware School and today we are going to be talking about a third grade math lesson. Our standard is 3M3. That's our time standard. And in this lesson, we are going to try to accomplish the following two objectives. Um, I can measure time intervals in minutes, and I can solve real world problems involving addition and subtraction of time interval in minutes. And we are going to do that today using a strategy of a number line and doing some hops or jumps on a number line to help us find those answers. Um, so as you're watching this, um, our secret word today is spring. So after you watch this lesson, make sure you let your teacher know that the secret word is spring for this lesson. All right, let's go ahead and get started. As a quick review, I kind of want to go over the analog clock. Um, looking at our analog clock, we want to remember that our shorthand is going to be tracking our hours and the long hand is going to be tracking our minutes. And those tick marks, this is all math vocabulary that we should be using when we're talking about time. Those tick marks are the little marks around the edges of the clock that represent one minute each. And you can see by counting by fives or by ones that there are 60 of those in one hour. Okay, so that's just a quick little review and something to think about because when we start using our number line and making those hops, we're going to be counting by fives and tens and also hours so we could kind of visualize in our minds what that looks like on our analog clock as we're doing it. So the first thing we're going to do is find something called elapsed time. Elapsed time is how much time has passed since the start of the event. As you can see, we're given the start time and the end time of an event. And we're gonna use this number line to make a diagram to help us find out how much time it takes to get from the start to the end. So in doing that, we are gonna think about and we're gonna label each part of our number line so that our work stays nice and organized. We're gonna find that start time and we're gonna write it right here. And we're going to put 9.45. And we want to remember to keep in mind this AM. AM and PM are very important to label on your times so that whoever is looking at your time knows exactly what time of day it is and that you don't mix those up. Because if we're at 9.45 AM, we're in the morning. But if that said PM, we'd be in the evening and that's much different. So let's get started. If we're at 9.45 a.m. and we want to get to 11.10, we always want to start with the biggest jump or hop on our number line, and that would be our hours. And looking at the time digitally, these are the hours. So if we did an hour hop and we went from 9.45 and we do a big hour hop, we're going to label it one hour, that's going to put us one more up from nine, which is 10. And those minutes do not change yet. We keep our minutes the same. It's just the hours that switch and just go up by one. So now we're at 1045. Now, if you're thinking, I'm going to do another hour hop. Well, let's think about that. If we go 1045 and we jump one more hour, that's going to put us at 1145, which would be past our end time. So we cannot do another hour hop. So we're going to have to do our smaller hop. So when I make this next hop, you're going to notice that it's going to be shorter because it's showing you visually that it's a smaller amount of time that's elapsed. So if we go from 945, I like to tell my friends in my class to use tens and fives because we've been counting by tens and fives since kindergarten. So we know 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. And our clock is kind of set up that way too. So I think it's easier to start with tens. If you prefer to just do fives, that's completely fine. If we do a 10 minute hop here, and I'm gonna label it again, 10M, to know that those are minutes, we're gonna look at our minutes here, and I'm gonna think, what is 10 more than 45? I know that that's 55. So 10, 55. We're not to our end time of 11, 10 yet. So I could do another 10 minute hop, which would put me at 11, 05, which is tricky because now we're switching the hours and the minutes. 
But if you're okay with that, that's perfectly fine. Or you could do a smaller hop of five minutes and label that 5M, and that would put us right at 11 o'clock. And that might be easier for you to count up to. And then you could do another five minutes, which would be 11.05, and then do one more five minute hop, which would put us at 11.10, which is our end time, okay? So it did not change from a.m. to p.m. because we stayed under 12 o'clock. Once we hit 12 o'clock, that's when it switches to p.m. Now we have to count our hops. We have to add them up. So we only have one hour. So in our answer at the bottom for elapsed time, it took one hour and it took 10, and we're going to add up the rest, plus 5 is 15 plus five more is 20, plus another five is 25, an hour and 25 minutes. We're gonna abbreviate that just for the sake of time. Okay, that's how we find elapsed time. Let's move on to the next one. Now we're gonna find the end time. They give us the starting time and they tell us how much time it took. Now we're gonna see what time the event ends. For me personally, I feel like this is a little bit less challenging than finding the elapsed time because it's easier for me to count up to the end using our elapsed time. So again, we're gonna label our first mark with our start time. And it says three hours and 25 minutes. So it's telling you with your elapsed time how many hops to make and what sizes they need to be. So we're gonna have three big one hour hops and we're gonna label each one as we do it. So one hour, and I like to label it as I do it so that my work stays organized and I don't lose track of what I'm counting. And I know from eight, and I'm visualizing the clock going all the way around in a full circle for that hour, that's going to be nine o'clock. And we're still in a.m. because we have not hit that 12 o'clock mark. We're going to do another one hour hop to put us at 10. And again, those hours are right here digitally for our digital time. We're only moving those up by one. Okay, we need three. So we're going to do one more one hour hop. And that's going to put us at 11 o'clock, still a.m. Okay, now we need to do our minutes. You might be thinking, well, I can just, if I know that the hours are gonna be 11 o'clock, I know that just 25 minutes more is gonna be 11.25 and I don't need to show that. But your teacher always tells you, you have to show your work. So we have to use our number line strategy to show our work. And I, again, I still like to use my tens and my fives because it's a lot faster for me to count that way. And I could do a 10 minute hop, another 10 minute hop, and that would be 11, 10, and then 11, 20. Now I'm just switching, my hours are the same. Now I'm just switching my minutes. I'm just counting on with my minutes and I need to get to 25. So I'm gonna do a smaller five, five minute hop and that's gonna put me at 11, 25. And when I write that time down here, I have to remember to include a M. So we're gonna write that right here. And that's how we find our ending time of events. We're just counting on. Now, for the next one, we're gonna be finding the start time which means on our number line diagram, we're gonna be hopping backwards. It's the same process, we're just beginning with the end and hopping backwards. So, we look at that end time and it's 12 a.m. Now, I included a.m. on this one because I want you to be thinking about what time that actually is because when we hop backwards, it gets a little bit confusing when we switch from a.m. to p.m. or vice versa if you need to. So, 
we know that this event ended at 12 a.m. That means this lasted all the way until midnight. So 12 a.m., that's midnight, that's very late. And we're gonna go backwards two hours and 30 minutes, okay? So when I'm thinking about an analog clock, I want you to visualize right now in your brains what 12 o'clock looks like, okay? That means our hour hand and that minute hand is both gonna be, they're both gonna be straight up in the air, right? And when that clock moves, instead of going forward, we're going to imagine it going backwards. So you have to think what comes before 12 on the clock. What comes before 12? That's going to be 11, 12, 11, 10, if we're counting backwards. So two hours. So we're going to start with that first hour hop. And I'm going to label it 1HR for hour. And I know that's going to take me to 11. But this is where it gets a little bit trickier because we're not at 11 a.m. We're at 11 p.m. It's nighttime. So we have to make sure we go ahead and label that so we do not forget. It switches to p.m. And we're going to do one more hop for an hour. They're my biggest jumps. One hour. So then 11, 12, 11, 10, keep counting backwards. And sometimes it helps me to go ahead and practice counting backwards before I do this. So I might go 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on, just to kind of get my brain ready so that I know which way I'm going. And we're remembering that this is the evening, it's nighttime. So we are at 10 p.m. now. And we have 30 minutes. Now, you could break 30 up into three 10-minute jumps. So if we make a 10-minute jump, and we think, now if we jumped one more hour, what would that put us at? From 10, we would go back to 9. Well, we don't want to go an entire hour. We're only going halfway. So what is halfway between 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock on the clock? That's going to be 9.30. But we're going to count backwards slowly. So our goal is to get to 9.30. We're at 10. If we hop back, that's going to be 9.50. That's 10 minutes backwards. So now we're going 60, 50, 40, 30. We do another 10-minute hop. That's going to be 940. We're counting backwards by tens and just changing our minutes now because we're done with the hours. And now we're going to do another 10 minute hop for 930. And that's two hours and 10, 20, 30 minutes. That's our elapsed time. And we ended at 930. And we're remembering that it was p.m. because we started at midnight. So we have to include that. So that event started at 9.30 in the evening. All right. So what our ultimate goal is always in math is to have problems that get us ready for real world practice. So now we're going to try this with a word problem. Okay, so this problem says, Katie drove to her aunt's house, arriving at 12.45 p.m. If Katie started her drive at 11.15 a.m., how long did the drive take? So we want to know how long it took her. So there are some things we have to find in this word problem before we do anything on our number line. So I like to personally read my word problems twice. I read it once and then I read it again to make sure I didn't miss anything. And that I'm visualizing what is happening and that I am identifying the important information needed to solve this problem. I know at Delaware, we call that using the Viper strategy. We visualize, we identify important information, and then we're going to plan it and solve it. 
So, Katie drove to her aunt's house, arriving at, arriving means that's when we got there. So it may not say end time. The problems aren't gonna say, here's your end time. No, it's say arriving at. So that, we have to know that vocabulary and that that means it's our end time. So I'm gonna write that down. 12, 40, 5 p.m. And if I think about what time of day that is, that is close to lunchtime. So we're almost right in the middle of the day. And then it does say she started at 11.15 a.m. So I can write 11.15 a.m. for my start time. So the only thing we don't know is the elapsed time. So we need to figure out how long it took. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up my line diagram for 11, 15, and I'm gonna put a.m. because I noticed that this one is switching from a.m. to p.m. again, and that's very important to, to remember, okay? Now, if I did an hour hop from 11, 15, and I did one hour, that means the, this hour, 11, is going to go up by 1. That's going to put me at 12.15. So can we do that? Can we jump and get to 12.15? Yes, we can. If you're thinking yes, you're correct because we just need to get to 45. So 12.15, one hour would be a great hop to start with. So I'm going to label my hop one hour so I remember. And that's going to put us at 12.15. And then if you're thinking right now that, oh, Mrs. Turney did not write AM or PM, you're right, I didn't, because I have to decide once this hits 12 o'clock, that's when I have to start using my PM. Since we're at 12.15, now we're in the afternoon, so I write PM. 12.15, but we're not at our end time yet. Our end time is 12.45, so now we need to think. Can I do another hour hop? Hmm, no, because that would put us at 1.15. One more than 12 is one, so we cannot do that. We need to switch to our minutes. So let's do a 10 minute hop and see where that puts us. We know those are a little bit smaller, 10 minutes. Now I'm looking at my minutes. What is 15 more, or I'm sorry, what is 10 more than 15? Well, it goes 5, 15, 25. You look at that tens place and it just moves by one, so it's 25. So now we're at 12, 25. But that's not 45, so we have to keep going. We're going to do another 10 minute hop. And that's going to put us at 12, 35, 15, 25, 35. Are we seeing the pattern? Are you finding that pattern of counting by tens? If you are, then when we do this next jump, you're going to notice right away that that puts us at 12, 45, and that is our end time, okay? But... It wasn't asking for end time, it was asking for how long did the drive take. Sometimes I underline my question just so I know what my end answer should be. And we're gonna go back to this and I know it took one hour and 10, 20, 30 minutes. I'm adding it up. So that drive, one hour and 30, minutes using my abbreviation again it took us an hour and a half that's another way of saying that for Kate for Katie to get to her aunt's house so she lives a little bit far away from her aunt it's not a short quick drive you may need to use a problem like that in the future whenever you're traveling to go somewhere you might need to know how much time is this going to take me so you can plan out your trip and decide when you need to make stops. Now, this next one, I really like this problem because it's kind of multiple steps and I've already got my number lines here, but if you were to see something like this, you might have to draw your own number lines and organize your work yourself. So, 
If we look at this problem, it says Mr. Kurt starts his day at 8.45 a.m. Okay, so if we're thinking, we see on our table right here, we see reading, math, and science. So this is a class schedule. This is a daily schedule. So he starts his day at 8.45. That means we have our very first start time already. Okay, and then each period lasts 45 minutes. That 45 minutes, that's our elapsed time. So we're going to use that interval each time we're drawing or making our marks on our number line diagram to help us. It's always 45 minutes, okay? So we're going to need to find out what time each class will start and finish. We're going to complete this chart. Okay, so I have my three number line diagrams ready to go. I know my first start time, it's reading class, first thing in the morning. We're going to start out at 8.45, keeping in mind that it's a.m., so we're in the morning. This is before your lunch. This is before recess. This is before all of that. It's 8.45 a.m., and we need to do some hops to get us to 45 minutes later. Now, since it's only minutes, we don't have to do any hour jumps. We're gonna go straight to our 10 minute hops. Okay, so 8.45, again, thinking about that hundreds chart that you were introduced to when you were in kindergarten and your teachers remind you of it all the time. We're gonna look at the minutes and we're gonna think, what's 10 more? Well, 45 plus 10, that's 55. So our 10 minute jump puts us at 8.55. Now, that's only 10 minutes, that's not 45, so we keep going. We have 10 more minutes, 55. Now, this is another one. We know that if we do 10 more than that, that's going to be 65, and there are only 60 minutes on a clock. Okay, so we have to know that our hour is going to switch also with this one. And once we get to 60, it starts over at zero. So this is gonna be 9.05, a brand new hour and minute. Okay, and we're gonna keep going. 10 minutes, that would put us at 9.15, 10, 20, 30. Do another 10 minutes, that's 9.25. 10, 20, 30, 40, we need five more minutes to get us to our end time. So we're gonna do a little five minute hop and five more. We know five, 10, 15, 20, we're counting by five, so 25, 9, 30. So we can fill in our chart up here with our end time for reading class. Reading class is gonna end at 9, 30 a.m. And guess what? We're gonna go straight into math class. The problem did not say anything about breaks between. So this end time is also gonna be our start time for math. 9.30 a.m. So you're actually finding two things when you're doing just this one strategy on your number line diagram. So this will be our new start time. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna do the same process over Again, we're gonna do our four 10 minute hops and a five minute hop. So we do 10, that puts us at 9.40. We do another 10, that puts us at 9.50. That's 10 plus 10, that's 20, we're getting closer. Another 10 would put us 50 to 60. 60 is when we start a brand new hour, so that's gonna make it 10 o'clock, 10, 20, 30. We do another 10 minute hop. So then that puts us at 10, 10. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, counting by our tens. We need to get to 45, so now we do our five minute hop again. And we go 10, 10 plus five, 10, 15. And we are still at a.m. because we have not hit 12 o'clock yet. Math class is going to end for Mr. Kurt at 10.15 a.m. I forgot my period up there. All right. So if that's our end time for, science, or for math, 
We also know that's when science begins. I sure hope there's a break after science, or this is going to be a long morning. Now, if you guys are at home and you're thinking, I don't need to do 10 minute hops or five minute hops or one minute hops or anything like that, I just know. Well, if you can do a 30 minute hop or a 25 minute hop and you're okay with adding that, that's okay. Just draw that hop and label it. It's important that however you do it, you're labeling what you're doing. If you make a 30 minute hop, just write 30 minutes. If you do 25, just write 25. So we're at 10, 15 a.m. Let's do our very last one, okay? We start at 10, 15. We're gonna do our 10 minute hop and that's gonna get us to 10, 25, 15 to 25. We are not changing our hours. We're just changing minutes unless we get to a brand new hour. Do another 10 and that's going to be 35. So if I make another 10 minute hop, we have 15, 25, 35. What's going to come next? Let's see, 1, 2, 10, 45. So we have 30 minutes, we need one more for 40 minutes, that's 10, 55. What are we going to do? Remember it's 45 minutes, so 10, 20, 30, 40 plus 5 is 45. I know some of my friends, they get started and they figure out that counting by tens pattern and then they'll put this 5 minute jump here, but then they'll count by tens instead of switching to fives. Or if it's a one minute hop, they may still be counting by fives. So you have to remember that when we switch hops and we're, it's a different number, you have to make sure you're counting on it the correct number. Uh, we do that a lot with money too. We might, we might count by fives for our money. And then when we get to our pennies, we still keep counting by fives because we're so used to it. Gotta remember to switch it up. And if we do five more minutes, that's 11 o'clock and we're still in the morning. So this is what Mr. Kurt's schedule looks like. Okay. All right guys, so I have some ideas for you to try at home. Um, some things I was thinking that you can maybe do is make your own clock out of a paper plate or you could draw it on paper. Label the parts, you could use popsicle sticks or crayons for your minute hands to in your hour hands you could create your own daily schedule try to figure out your start and end times after deciding how much time it would take you for each thing on your schedule you could also create some word problems with your families involving time and try to solve them together um, the weather has been so nice you could even try to do some of those outside with sidewalk chalk so thanks for joining us today and i hope you remember that the secret word is spring don't forget to tell your teachers all right thank you